so many new beautiful holiday releases but I decided to give some of my products I already have some love so whatever you decide I have lots of tips and tricks plus some slimline cards and envelopes to share this is Teresa Litchfeld thank you so much for joining me for a new video on making beautiful holiday cards I'm so happy to say that I just completed the Alta New Educator program. Have you ever looked at all the products you have and thought to yourself that you haven't used them very much or haven't used some of them at all? And that's kind of how I was feeling. So I decided to use some of them and I'm going to change up the color. I often find color in fashion and design magazines. I'm going to use these Alta New colors. With the Pick Fence ink blending brushes, I'm going to use the smallest ones. I'm going to make several different backgrounds just by changing up the color and use the Leaves and Berries stencil from Altenew. This stencil is great for all year round. So I applied Pixie Spray to the back of the stencil and this is an A2 size card. And how I ink blend, I'm using kind of a medium small brush and I'm using the blush ink just to go over every leaf. So I'll show a little bit of this. I'm going to come in with my next color after I'm done with that. And the rouge. And I'll apply that over the top. I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush. It's a little bit thinner one. And just to apply it to the base of the leaf. When the inks dry, they really smooth out beautifully. And you really have that beautiful gradation of color. My next color is paper bag and I'm going to use a little slim uh, brush again on that and I'm going to apply that just to the stem and just a barely bit of the base a little bit over the top of the rouge. It really gives us a lot of dimension to use different ink colors and makes something look totally different. The last color in this combination is crimson and I'm going to use that on the berries and I'm going to use a little tiny round brush that's in that set and just apply most of the ink at the base of that berry and a little bit up and you can see when you get done it just really turned out pretty. I love that color combination. I have seen that a lot lately. Here's the finished card for the second background and I wanted more of a blue green uh, like a eucalyptus leaf. And here's the color uh, combination set that I used. So I used the Mountain Mist um, first and then I used the Emerald to go over that. And then I used a little bit of the Charcoal Suit and the uh, Mountain Pine at last. And I used the Mountain Pine on the berry. For the third background, I wanted to make a slimline card, and so it's 8 and 5 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths. And I decided just to use three colors on that, and here's my color combination. Most stamps and stencils are made for an A2 size card, but I wanted to show how you can use it on a slimline card. So I just used some tape and taped off the back where the image ends, and then I'm going to ink blend all of that. And after I'm done with my ink laying on one side, I move it over and line up the pattern as best I can. And, and again, I taped off um, the things I don't want to show on my ink blending. So again, I use the blush and then the yellow ochre and then paper bag on the stems and the bottom. I use the blush on the berries. I'm pleased with how that turned out. I'm just obsessed with that color combination, even though it's very non-traditional for the holidays. I cut out a whole bunch of the layering points that it dies from Hero Arts uh, to embellish my cards with, and I'll use the accordion colors to again ink blend on each one. For my card with the green background, I really wanted a white poinsettia on it. So I used mostly blush with a little bit of that frayed leaf in the center. I used mountain mist and emerald on the leaves. And then I one tip I really love is to use colored pencils. So I use the darker pencils to kind of push back shade and white is great for highlighting. I also use the Aqua Nouveau Shimmer Pen. Um, in the center of that just for a little highlight and the Posca paint pen is great to add dimension and highlight too. 
Another fun tip, I like to use embossing powder for detail. So I use that with the Versmark pen and I went around the bottom flower uh, petal and the leaves just to add some really fun texture. I then used the crimp frame dies from the Greedery and then went around the next to it with the fine frame cover die from Ulta New. And I always stored the rest of my frames from that frame die in the back of my package. I used the two largest dies from the Apothecary Label dies from Ulta New and cut them out of grain and then popped them up on some foam tape for dimension. And then put my poinsettia on top of that. For the inside of the card, I decided to put my sentiment there and I used the Very Merry Sentiment Set from uh, Concord 9th. It has great holiday sentiments and I'll use that on a lot of the cards. Here's the card I made with that first background and I pretty much used the same things as I used on the green card. I just used gold mare card stock on the fine frames. That um, sentiment is also from that set. I used the blush rouge and crimson to uh, ink up the um, poinsettia on that and the gray leaf and forest glaze on the center and the leaves. Again, the aqua shimmer pen and the Posca paint pen. And then I went around the edge again with that pure white um, embossing powder from Alta New. On the slimline card, I added two poinsettias. And again, it's the 8 and 5 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths. And I added the gold Midas Touch um, shimmer pen to the centers of that. And I inked up the poinsettias with the blush in the rouge. And the leaves, I used the yellow ochre in the paper bag. I went around that largest petal again with the white embossing powder. But then I used the copper around the leaves for something different. And it kind of blended in with that paper bag. Um, the sentiment there is the apothecary labeled dye and stamp. Another fun trick I did was instead of using a slum line dye, I rolled it. And then I went around it with my Versamark pen and the copper embossing powder for a finished edge. I added the blush um, cardstock strip and a gold foil strip also. For the slimline envelope, I like to use a 12 by 12 uh, piece of cardstock. You need two pieces. You're going to need a piece that is 8 by 10. And then the flap, which is the top flap on this, is a 9 by 3 and a half. And I like to use a quarter inch score tape and my Teflon bone folder on that. So on the 8 inch side, uh, you put the 8 inch at the top of your scoreboard and score down at the 4 inch mark all the way down. And fold that. Now I like to reinforce that fold with my bone folder. Open it up and you're going to score at the half inch mark on each end. So now open up that piece and we're going to cut up just halfway where one of those score marks are. So we're going to take out part of that uh, part of that score. So cut along that, that where you scored down the half and you're going to take out one of the sides. Kind of how you see me doing here. After you cut that out, because we only want bone flap, so then I miter all the corners and just mix them so they're easier to fold. So you're going to cut on both sides, cut that away, and you can see I changed my long scissors, it's much easier. And so you've got that, that kind of cut out. So I kind of froze it here so you can see uh, what it looks like. And then when you fold it up, it folds up really nice. Now I'm going to take the top flap and I'm going to score down one of the whole sides at the half inch mark. So you're going to score down the nine inch side. And fold that and reinforce it with your bone folder. And again, miter those edges. Just make so that card stock doesn't hang out. And I round the corners of the flap. 
I decided to add some of that stenciling on there, so I just took some post-it notes and masked it off really quick, just so I could get part of the image I wanted on this. And I'm gonna ink blend it just like I did the pink background. Post-it notes makes for really uh, quick masking. It's always fun to have a custom envelope that matches your card. So then I took the Midas Touch pen and added a little bit of glitter to that on the outside of the flap. Now I'm going to take the score tape to finish making the envelope. And I'm going to add that score tape to those flaps on the side of the body. So I add a piece to each side, and then I'm going to add a piece to the top flap. And I open the top flap up so you can see the image on the outside, and then put the tape across that. I like to add my um, flap on the top. I like to add it first before I close the envelope up. So I will um, fold that flap underneath so I can really line it up good with the top of the envelope. And press and adhere that down. Now you can adhere the sides and take off the release paper and fold that up and you have your envelope. And now you can reinforce that fold of that flap with your bone folder. And I add a piece of score tape along the top so when I go to send it I have something to close it up with. I thought I would add the uh, wax seals that uh, Altenew just came out with. So I put a piece of my seam binding tape on the top flap. I'm not sure how you can do this and not have to seal it up with it. So I put it onto my waffle flower mat and I'm using the wax seal beads and the melting spoon with my heat gun and I'm going to melt that up. So I put six in there and you can do like four to six beads. And you really want to melt it good until you see it kind of bubble up and then pour it on there. So I just poured on the seam binding tape. And then I have this really pretty flower uh, sill stamp that I'm going to put on there. And just leave it on there for a second until it dries. Lift it off. And you can lift off the whole seal. And you don't have to close it until you're ready to sand it. You could put a little bit of glue under that um, when you go to sand it. And then to get all the wax beads out of the spoon, I just heat it up again and then use a baby wipe to clean it out with. Here's another look at the first set of three cards in envelope. And color really just does have such an impact. They look so much different from each other. Here's a look at the finished card for the second set that I'll make. I'm going to use the same color scheme that I did in the first set of cards, but I'm going to change up the design. And with that, I'm going to use the Statement Flower Stamp and Die set from Altenew, and I'm going to do some public coloring. I'm going to use the Ink on 3 No Line Fit Out uh, ink to do that, and I like to swatch out my public colors. That really helps me uh, coordinate them with my inks. I use the Express It Blending card when I cut the color. I love how bright white it is and smooth. I really like to stamp in my Misty for the, uh, the no line coloring because if I need to stamp it a couple times to get it a little bit more dark, I can do that. So when I cut it color, the way I was taught and how I like to color is I'm using a W2 marker and I just go around the flower and map out where my shaded areas are with the gray. And because this is going to be a really light flower, I don't want it to be too dark in the shaded areas. I still want the flower to be pink. And you can see here, I use R22 to go over all the gray and a little bit beyond. So with my flicking strokes, I do that. So now here is R20, and I'm going to go over all of that plus a little bit beyond that and leave a little bit of the white space for my lightest colors. So I like to work dark to light. I can see where my darkest areas are gonna be 
and um, I leave the lightest areas for my highlight and I really get good blending with that. So I go over the whole flower and now I'm going to change uh, to the R00 and that's going to be my very lightest color. And I go in between both of those. I kind of flick back and forth um, and that really melds and blends that in. I really want to keep some a lighter, almost white area. That's a pretty light color of pen. But that's how I get a really good blend. Here's my finished flower. I use some of those gold shades for the center of the flower. And I also use my pencils a lot to um, push back the shaded areas and white for the highlights again. I use the Versamark pen on the leaves for a, a little bit different look. I'm going to emboss that with the uh, copper embossing powder mostly and I just kind of made like the little stroke marks and then I use some of the golden peach for a little bit of highlight in there. I like that so much I used the uh, antique gold in the center of the flower for a little bit of texture on that too. It just kind of helped the texture in both places. But I used my pencils for a little bit of shading in there um, and I actually use my indigo blue a lot. That's a really good shade instead of black. For the card design, I'm going to use a trifold card. And for the first set of stamps, I'm going to use the um, plaid background stamp from Concord Knight, which I love. And it's got that extra detail stamp. And then, then I'm going to use the dainty Swiss dot for the second fold. So for this, uh, for the plaid stamp, I'm using the yellow ochre. And I'm going to use that detail line uh, stamp that comes with it. And I'm going to use the rouge and stamp the lines across the plaid. It just is so cute to have two colors on it. I always make a template uh, out of copy paper for my um, card designs and keep that. So for this design, you need an 11 inch by five and a half inch. And when you fold it up, it's gonna be an A2 card. I have a little area in my storage bin where I keep those templates. Now you're going to score that, and the first score is at 4 and an 8. Then flip it around, and you're going to score it again at 2 and 5 eighths. I really didn't want this to be, the flaps to be kind of half and half, um, that front flap. I wanted it to be a little bit off, and I didn't score. You can see there's a little bit of space in there, so you can fold it nice. And I just reinforced those folds with my bone folder. To make the card, I cut out the flower, and when I cut it out, I added two more die cuts behind it for stability. And I added some just regular pencil and used the paper blending stump to give it a kind of a drop shadow look instead of fussy cutting it out. I cut out my plaid, and the plaid itself is two and three eighths by five and a quarter, and the pink border around it uh, that is two and five eighths by five and a half. And I always write those dimensions on my template. The dainty Swiss dot I stamped in uh, Bruges, and that's going to fit on the inside flap. And I left a little bit of a border um, with the dimensions so when you open it up, it looks nice. So the pink on that is four and a quarter by five and a half, and the Swiss dot is four by five and a half. I wanted to make another slumline card and I decided to make this a vertical card to fit the statement flower. And I'm going to use all the green inks and show how to make the slumline with that plaid um, set. So I line up the card stock at the one inch mark in the corner. And I'm going to use the mountain pine ink first. And I kind of want more of a um, that blue green so I'm going to use both inks. So I line that up and I put a little temporary tape on the back of my card sock and I ink up my stamp with the mountain pine stamp and I stamp the mountain pine twice. Um, it just gets a little bit smoother and then I ink it up with the emerald and you get that difference of color. It's kind of that in between green, it's kind of a blue green. There's a lot of ink on there and it can be an inky mess so you want to make sure and really clean off your um, Misty and your stamp really good. 
So now I've flipped it around and I've just lined up the stamp with the pattern on the other side. And I'm going to stamp it again um, with the mountain pine first. And I put a piece of purple tape, but I backed it off just a little bit so I don't have a white line. So I ink it up with the mountain pine first. And again, I stamp it twice. And then I'm going to clean it off with a baby wipe and a microfiber towel. And then stamp the emerald ink on there. And you can see I don't stamp all the way across the stamp. There's really no reason and to do that and plus I don't want to take the chance of getting ink on it. So then I take the tape off and you can really see there's a little bit of a seam and because it's wet you can really still see that. But as it dries it just really melds into each other. Here's the finished cards and the first card, the trifold card, I made a bell and belly band and I put that statement flower kind of so it's down the center and hanging off that front flap. I like to bend the card a little bit to get that belly band on. It makes it a lot easier and I wanted that sentiment to be in the middle of those two flowers um, just so it didn't take away from them. I used a sentiment from the Snow Flurry stamp set from Concord and Ninth, and I embossed it with the Antique Gold um, embossing powder from Altenew. On the Slimline card, I did some complementary coloring on the statement flower, and I did again some of those blue green leaves. And I wanted to make sure um, the, my card fit. But even though the statement flower hangs off the edge a little bit, it's going to fit in that envelope because that envelope ends up being 4x9. I heat embossed the sentiment in silver and it's from that same Concord Ninth stamp set. And then I added some silver mirror cardstock strips to the bottom and the top and Lucy's cards pearls uh, around the flower. I added lots of detail with my colored pencils and also with the Posca paint pen. And then I added that glitter pen to the center of the flower. On the envelope, I made the envelope the same way, but this time I did it on the a body of the envelope on the outside of it and just embossed with silver embossing powder. And here you can see that card fits really nice inside the envelope. Although I didn't show the making of the red card, I used the um, crimson and the rouge on the plaid background and I did use the lines this time and the sentiment is from that same Concordonite stamp set. I added two more die cuts to it to pop it up and I used the Midas touch on the center of the flower. So everything is pretty much the same way. I used my Copics I used was W6 for underpainting. And then I used uh, R27, 24, 22, and 20. I hope I gave you lots of inspiration and you'll try different colors and designs with the products you have to make some really beautiful cards for the holidays. Thank you so much for joining me today and I really appreciate the time you spend. Here's a couple more videos that you might find helpful and I really hope you have a great day doing something you love.